Good morning, caregivers. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia live on Facebook. Today is June 19th, 2019, and it's 8.15 a.m., and you're watching me, and I'm glad you are. We started this little show sometime in January of this year, and we presently have viewers in four countries that I know of, um, so I'm always glad to hear from folks that don't exactly live near me. I want to thank our sponsors for our show that do make these folks make it happen. HD Imports located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. 803-985-0985. Call them for the maintenance and repair of your Honda, Hyundai, Acura, Toyota, and Kia. You'll be so glad you did. Honest, hardworking professionals to take care of your car. You just can't beat that. And then Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story, award-winning Emmy-nominated television show. You can find them on YouTube at Life in the Carolinas and at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com to find out where it is showing in your part of the world. We are glad to be friends with both of these sponsors. We thank them very much. Well, I just got through filling up my little pill container, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The dumb thing is going to make me crazy. I've got to buy a good one. I think I've got one of the dollar ones from the Dollar, dollar Tree. Well, when you open up the little tabs, they won't stay open. They fall down and you're trying to constantly open it to put the pills in. Or when you go to shut it, it won't shut. And I got it all done and I picked it up and the lid came off and pills went everywhere. <sighs> well, I was able to account for them all and got them all put back in the right spot. But I'm going to go buy one of those good ones. I'm going to spend 5 or $6. I'm just going to get crazy. <laughs> I wanted to talk with you today about how to visit someone with dementia if you've got a little rug rat with you. You know, those little ones that kind of tag along. Sometimes they're noisy and sometimes they're sweet and sometimes you could just you know, wring their necks. Well, it's different and you should think about that in advance. When you're visiting grandma, let's say it's grandma in this situation and grandma has dementia, do you, um, do you take all the kids at one time, especially if you got a bunch, or does the whole family get together at one time with all the children and all the grandchildren and maybe a few great grands in tow? Mm, let's think about that. But first of all, let's just talk about an average, you know, Wednesday morning visit and you've got three kids and you're taking them to see grandma. I am so glad you're going to do that. That's wonderful. Your children need to interact with their grandmother. Their grandmother needs to interact with the children. That is, if you've taught your children how to behave. Now, I have been in some situations where I'm like, were these kids raised in a barn? I mean, it's like, oh gosh, the way they behaved. Your children need to know that when they're around really anybody, but in this point case, in this case, people with dementia, we're not screaming and yelling. We're not running around and acting crazy. We are trying to use our inside voice and trying to have a little bit of calm about us and trying to think about what we can do to interact with grandma that will make grandma feel good. Now, we're working with children who their brains their brains are in good shape. They need to begin to acknowledge that this visit is not so much about them, but about interacting with grandma. So that's going to put the, the onus on you to help your children understand. So you might want to have a little practice session. You might want to say, okay, when we go to visit grandma, this is what I want it to look like. I want you to sit down beside grandma, maybe take grandma's hand and hold grandma's hand and just rub her hand. She's going to love that. And just talk to grandma. Talk to her. Tell her what you did in school yesterday. Tell her about the test you took and how you made a good grade or, or how you rode your bicycle yesterday for an hour and a half and you didn't fall. How wonderful it was that you were able to do that. You're going to take your training wheels off. Yay, you're excited about that. But what we're going to tell our children is you're not running around grandma's bed making laps. You're not running up and down the hall screaming and yelling. This is true if grandma lives at home, in her own home, or in someone's home, or maybe if grandma lives in assisted living or a group home. I think it's even more important if, if the grandmother is living in a group setting because if your children are running around acting like wild people in a group setting, such as an assisted living or memory care, they're disturbing more than just grandma. Think about that. You can make your children behave, and if they don't, don't take them to see grandma. It is going to agitate grandma. She's going to get all wound up because there's just so much going on, and there's noise, and there's kids, and there's running, and... Uh, and what's that going to do to her? 
is going to do what I just showed you. She's going to be all wound up. She's going to be more likely to be angry later. She's going to be harder to get along with when the caregivers come to care for her because you've got her so wound up and you don't want that. You want that visit to be pleasant. What you also want is your children to understand grandma has dementia. Well, mama, what, what is dementia? Explain to your children that grandma's brain has a disease and grandma has a hard time remembering and that's part of her disease so because of that we're going to try to be a little bit calmer than normal and um, we're going to be very kind to grandma and we're just going to tell her stories and then i would like for you to ask grandma about when she was growing up um, johnny okay your job john is going to be ask grandma about um, where she went to high school and susie when you talk to grandma i want you to ask her what kind of job her daddy did so you can feed your children some cues they're going to remember they're smart little whips you know they're going to remember and they can sit down beside grandma take some lotion with you and one of them's going to rub one hand and the other one's going to rub the other and they're going to talk with grandma about the past and you can help them understand grandma doesn't remember yesterday well but she remembers a long time ago really well so we're going to go visit with grandma and you are going to to ask her questions about the past now i'll tell you something i see happen that i hate is when parents say go give granny a kiss don't make your children do that they may not want to give granny a kiss if they want to more power to them and especially don't tell your kids to go give all the old women in the community a kiss that's just a little bit creepy don't do that <laughs> but do teach them how to interact in a kind way with the people they don't know there are appropriate behaviors in for all of us when we're with people we don't know and the assisted living or the memory care community is a good place to begin to teach your children how to interact with people they don't know. And again, helping them understand what dementia is, some cues of some things they can talk about and some things that must not talk about that because grandma's not going to remember. Um, I just think it's important that we include our children in this experience of dementia. Um, they need to know what's going on. Now, do they need to be there when grandma is passing? That's going to depend on how old they are. Um, little kids? Mm, no. Why? What is the benefit of that? No, I don't think so at all. Um, but if they're 16 and 17, uh, yeah, maybe they need to be there. Maybe they need to experience that process of death and understanding what it is um, and maybe not that's going to be a decision you've got to make i would not impose my thoughts on that although i got some thoughts on that but the thing that i'm more concerned about is how you are interacting in front of grandma when she has this disease going on in her brain that's keeping her from interacting with those children in the way that she might like another little clue you might um, think about is it's very possible that grandma does not recognize these children as her grandchildren depending on where she is in the disease them coming in and saying hey grandma actually might not land on her real well because see grandma is living back in 1956 she was not a grandma then and and she's a little concerned why are these children calling me grandma and that doesn't feel well? So maybe they want to actually go in and call her Mrs. Smith or maybe, hey, Vera, call her by her name. It's going to feel a little funny for the family, but it's not about how it feels for the family. It's about how it lands on that person with dementia. And if calling them by their name, especially their first name, feels better then then that's what you need to do. I can tell you that even calling them Mrs. Smith by their married name may not land on them because they could be living way far back in time when they are still living at home, haven't gotten married, maybe haven't graduated high school. So they got no clue, no clue who Mrs. Smith is. They go by their maiden name. So I can tell you in mama's last days, um, everybody just referred to her as Vera Jean. Vera Jean. It was all the time Vera Jean. And when I would look at her, I'd go, hey, Vera Jean Carpenter. And that's my mama's maiden name. That's what I called her most of the days for the last probably 
five, six weeks of her life because my mama was far back in time. And I wanted her to be able to realize when I was talking to her that I was talking to her, Vera Jean Carpenter, because that's who she was. Felt a little bit funny for me. I wanted just to hug her and call her mama, and I did. Because I'm telling you, you can't cut out a 57 years worth of calling somebody mama and it just stop. Um, but when I'm trying to, when I was trying to get mama to understand something, I would call her Vera Jean or Vera Jean Carpenter. So you might want to have that conversation with your your children, the grandchildren, about what they're going to call grandma or grandpa. So think about that. It's a little bit different, but honey, life is different. <laughs> the minute that diagnosis came through, life became different. And with every day, life continues to be different. So helping your children to understand that in advance of visiting is a good thing. And also, don't visit for a long time. You know, she don't need company for three hours. Literally, if you go and if you're in and you're out in about an hour's time, that's good. You don't need to be hanging around a whole lot longer than that because she's just going to get tired. And the more tired she gets, the less she's going to be able to um, interact in a positive way, the less she's going to be able to comprehend, and the more agitated she's going to be when you leave. And the more agitated she is when you leave, the less the staff's going to like you when you come back. <laughs> so keep that in mind. It's different, but you're going to do a good job at this. If you have questions about this or a story you want to share with me, you can always write me, carol at letstalkdementia.org. Now, wait a minute. Where's my book? Oh, poo. It's in the living room. had a board meeting last night, and I'm very thankful for my board members and, and how good they are to me, but I took that book in to show it to them. The new book, Reminisce in Worship, it is now available on Amazon in Kindle version only because I have not figured out how to get the front and back cover to print correctly with Amazon for it to be in print, but I'm working on it. But in the meantime, it is available at letstalkdementia.org along with our other books. And um, you can also find all of our books except for Reminisce and Worship uh, at booksamillion.com. I didn't know that till last night. Is that not the coolest thing on the planet? I didn't know that. I learned something new every day. Had a, a, a viewer write and tell me that she had ordered them through Books A Million. Totally cool. Well, I hope you have a good day. I want to thank our sponsors again, Life in the Carolinas. Always a good day. Oh, it's never a bad day for a good story. I about did it backwards. Or it could be it's always a good day for a good story. But anyway, uh, Life in the Carolinas on YouTube and at lifeinthecarolinas.com. And then HD Imports, 803-985-0985 maintenance and repair of your car. Give them a call. You'll be glad you did. Well, I have the pleasure this evening of speaking at Brookdale of South Park in Charlotte, North Carolina. Looking forward to going and speaking with those folks. Join us there if you got some time this evening. I think it starts at 630 Brookdale at South Park. They'd be happy to have you. I'm sure of it. Have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.